what's the word y'all is this the first recap of 2023 it might be i'm excited for it because today was a crazy day in the association lillard dropped 60 we finally saw Joel and B versus Ben Simmons. Steph got ejected for being mad at Jordan Poole. And Anthony Davis returned after a long injury. I'm trying something new. Let me know what you think. But before we get into the recap, let's talk about a sponsor, the Enjoy Basketball brand, a, a, a brand that I'm the owner of. A lot of y'all already know this, but we have a newsletter that drops Monday, Wednesday, Friday that keeps everybody in touch with the game of basketball. It's for the enjoyers and you watching this video, so I'm assuming that you enjoy the game. But like today, there are so many things that happen in the association. It was impossible for anybody to watch every single one of these games. And that's what the newsletter is for. It's for you to keep in touch. And it's perfect because it drops before class. It drops before work. And you can read it on your commute. You can do whatever you need to do. And I think we're close to 40,000 uh, subscribers so uh, hit the link in the description obviously 100% free and you get these emails that keep you up to date with the game so shout out to uh, the team we got some great writers let's start off with Damian Lillard 60 because I'm be honest with you this is not a game I watched live I got the notification once he hit 50 I was like all right let me tune in so I watched the last what 10 or so points but I, I missed out but that's why we watch possessions, ladies and gentlemen. After the 60-point game, there are only two people in NBA history with more 60-point games than Damian Lillard. And those two people are Will Chamberlain and Kobe Bean Bryant. Rest their souls, man. That's an elite company to be a part of. Now, dropping 60 in itself is crazy. But dropping 60 when you shot 21 for 29 is ridiculous. When you hit nine threes out of 15 of tips is ridiculous. And, and I watched the possessions. Again, I didn't watch this live. I recommend you do the same thing. Find how many open looks Damien, Damien got. It's not a lot of them. This man is step back three, hand in his face, heavily contested. Green is going in. Reverse layup over a bigger defender. It did not matter. This man was on one tonight, and he did his thing, man. It's, it's so great to see a Damian Lillard game. I'm mad at myself for missing it live because I don't think there's a lot of things better than watching Dame when he is super hot live. You know what I'm saying? And I missed it, but luckily, we got the possession. So, I, you know, I got to see it a little bit. We finally got to see Ben Simmons versus Joel Embiid in Philadelphia. Always supposed to be a show. The, the a fan is there with an old Ben Simmons jersey, and he got rid of the Simmons last name. He put loser on the back. They were booing him to all hell. In a great game, man. The Brooklyn Nets held in this one for quite a long time. And on the Ben Simmons tip, the third quarter was one of the most aggressive offensive quarters I've seen for him this whole season. You know, we got all the videos going viral about uh, Kyrie Irving having to tell him to shoot and all of this stuff, and it hasn't been great for him on the offensive side of the ball. Something about being in Philly today made him try to do a lot of things offensively but you had Seth Curry having a 32 point game and Kyrie Irving doing what he does in the fourth quarter but the real MVP of this game for me from the Brooklyn Nets side is of course Nicholas Claxton he continues to add to his game you know what I'm saying we knew that he was great defensively this season like if I had an all defensive vote right now I'm pretty sure I'm putting Nicholas Claxton on there that's how good he has been but him dropping 25 points on 11 for 12 from the field is is really really great but those 76ers though they have won 19 of their last 23 games. 19 of their last 23, and they're, they're going under the radar, man. And I keep telling Philly fans it's better to go under the radar because as soon as the expectations come and, and you fall, then you feel bad as a fan and everything is all chaos. So just continue to go under the radar. In these games, you miss Joel Embiid from the time. You miss Tyrese Maxey for a good chunk of these. The one can say the thing has been James. James been in this lineup, and he's been great. Now, we're not talking about Houston James Harden. We was averaging 30-plus points per game. Uh, his game has changed a little bit, but he's still super effective. The most interesting thing for me when it comes to them is if they're going to continue to have Tyrese Max come off the bench because so far it's looked pretty good. Now, he's played 27 games, and 20 of them he's been a starter. But in those five games of him coming off the bench, it just adds another element. And obviously, he's talented enough to start in this league for sure, but maybe for the sake of the team, you keep him on the bench because DeAnthony Melton has been working very well alongside James Harden. And right now, Russell Westbrook is the betting favorite to win six man of the year. I mean, with this, if he continues to come off the bench for the rest of the season, I, I, I mean, he might win the award. All right, my, let, let, let's talk about this because the Memphis is going crazy. I made a video about the Memphis Grizzlies sometime last week about how good they have been. They were on an 11-game winning streak, and they have not won a game since. I think, they're, <laughs> I think they've lost their last four. I'm not a guy that believes in jinxes, and I don't think the Kenny for real jinx is real. But they have not won a game since I, I dropped that video. I think it's purely coincidence. But it was so bizarre to see Steph Curry get ejected um, on that play because I, f I felt the change. Like, it felt like it was an ill-advised shot from, from Jordan Poole where it was at 116 on the clock late in the fourth quarter. And I feel Steph frustration there. And I understand why the, why the refs had to do it, but I hate that they did it, man. 
luckily for the Warriors, they were able to close this out without him. But for the for us as us the fans to have Steph Curry be missing the last couple minutes, Steph versus Ja, we missed out on something that could have been a lot better, but it still ended up being good. And this is a quality win for them, man, because we we've been waiting for the Warriors to do the thing when they turn it up and win a uh, seven out of eight or something like that. And it just hasn't happened. And this might be the game that maybe changes things. I don't really know. We've seen Steve Kerr change the lineup quite a bit over the last couple of weeks because he's allowed the small ball lineup to start games and have Kevon Looney come off the bench because they need that kick in the butt right off the rip. And, and, and they need Jordan Poole to be the starter version of Jordan Poole because he's significantly better as a starter than coming off the bench this season. Um, but again, it hasn't really hasn't really happened. And hopefully for their sake, this is the game because you don't want to be one of those playing teams. And I know the gap between five seed and 13 seed right now is practically nothing. But you don't want to be on one of those teams that have to win to get in. Also, Jaron, I just need you to stay on the court, man. Oh, it's hard for me to convince people that you the DPOY if you foul out with 25 minutes played, bro. You, you got to stay on the court. That last foul was so avoidable, it's ridiculous. And Anthony Davis came back and Rui Hachimura got his debut. They went against the Spurs and Loki the Spurs was doing their thing for the first three quarters. And then we saw the Lakers turn up in the fourth. LeBron ended up with 20, 11, and 9. And then that streak of him having to drop 30 plus point games for them to even be in it. And they won this one pretty convincingly. And Anthony Davis for his first game back, looking really good he had a couple big time blocks one of them is when Dennis Schroeder got a block in the corner on Trey Jones and then they dumped it off to Zach Collins on offensive rebound he tried to go up and Anthony Davis blocked that too so uh the, the crowd was jumping and they got their win and eventually Anthony Davis will be back in the starting lineup or not no let me stop let me stop a lot of Lakers fans were saying how how the bench unit that they ran today was better than the starters because they had Russell Westbrook coming off the bench Anthony Davis and newly acquired Rui Hachimura a, a win is a win is a win you needed that right now um second game of a second day of a back-to-back -back. and yeah let's get to some of the other games that may not have been as exciting or as newsworthy but let's just talk the Hawks win after a controversial no call with DeJounte Murray was guarding Shea Gills Alexander by the time you see this video you might get the the last two minute report or whatever but I don't know I I personally believe that as long as a whistle's not blown, you play good defense. And that good defense <laughs> helped them win this game. Boy, OKC. OKC went from a team where the first month of the year, I was not watching their games. I was watching Shea's highlights. I was watching Shea's possessions. It has evolved dramatically since the first month. Where I'm genuinely, right now, if I'm ranking my most favorite teams to watch right now, it's the Kings and it is the Thunder number two. Like, that's how fun it's been. Jalen Williams, J Dub, because you got to specify the other Jalen Williams. You know, sometimes he plays, sometimes he don't, sometimes he starts, sometimes he don't. You know what I'm saying? Um, J Dub is is a super fun rookie, bro. He's my favorite rookie in his class by by far. And earlier was Jeremy Sochan, bro. I was I was basically trying to figure it out. Jalen Williams has taken that over completely. He is relentlessly going to the basket. He does not miss in transition. I I just I love him as a player. Um, so, you know, keep doing your thing, J-Dub. And, you know, Shea ended up with, what, 29 in the, or 26 in the first half and ended up with 36, you know. Um, but in this one, the Atlanta Hawks f closed one out. I mean, it's been team notorious for just blowing leads, and they blew one in this one, but but got the last stop, which is all that really matters. Brandon Ingram came back, but it didn't matter because uh, Anthony Edwards continues to do his thing. I I'm very curious to see if he's going to get some all-star consideration. They're a, they're a 500 team at this point after this win, a 37-6-5 game. He's been one of the most consistent things, or the most consistent thing, on, on the season for the Timberwolves. So it will be interesting to see if he gets in. This might not be the year, but he continues this. I feel like next year is like his lock year. You know what I'm saying? I was so excited when I saw Bucks versus Nuggets on the schedule. And then I saw that there was no Jokic, no Jamal Murray. So it was a game I didn't, I didn't watch. I, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. The Wizards continue their win streak. The first game in the Kendrick Nunn era, he caught a body too, which is crazy. Kendrick Nunn caught a body in his very first game. But it, it's becoming more consistent where Alperin Sengun is the best player on the court. This, this has got to be like the fifth game in the last seven where he has been undoubtedly the best player on the court. Kuzma's getting all the touches and attempts that he wants, and maybe that's the reason he's going to resign here if he does because he, he nobody's stopping him from taking all the shots. But Al P was undoubtedly the best player on the court in this one, and, and that's that's really good for the Houston Rockets, especially after the last game, the last win, where uh, Jalen Green ended up with 42. They're doing a lot more dribble handoffs between Al P and, and guards, and, and, and I think that's the recipe to maximize him, but also allow your team to be watchable and better offensively because there's not a lot of people 
on this roster that I feel like you can trust as a playmaker. The Orlando Magic almost pulled the Chicago Bulls by allowing the Indiana Pacers to have a comeback, but luckily they nipped it in the bud. Wendell has been so consistent. 18 to 10 tonight. I didn't realize he got the double double. 18 to 10 from him. Uh, Gary Harris started and hit six for six for threes, but I'm super happy to see Jonathan Isaac back on the court. Um, he had a better game one, the game two, but in this one still, he ended up with two, two, two steals. His defensive versatility is one of the best in basketball. So eventually he'll get off this eight minutes minutes restriction uh, and eventually playing real minutes. And they just got a log jam. Bo Bo, Mo Bamba, Franz, uh, Mo Wagner has been playing minutes for them. And now Jonathan Isaac, those are like all guys that are forward slash centers that deserve to get PT somewhere. So I wonder what the hell they're going to do. And the Raptors step on the neck of the Sacramento Kings and just hold them at bay for the entire game. The entire game. You know, in the NBA, you be getting those fake comebacks. You Oh, they narrowed it down to six. Never. The Toronto Raptors were in control of this game from the very beginning and never let up. First recap of 2023. That is crazy. I mean, we've been dropping videos, of course, but they haven't been really recappy. They've been like, we got one topic. Let's talk about that one topic. This is when we sat down to watch a bunch of basketball so we can talk about everything. So let me know what you think, and I'll be back tomorrow.